Hi everyone, this is John Gress, and welcome to week four of UNR 201, Tech Gorilla Previs with UDK. Today we're going to dive into more detail with the latest in Gorilla set and prop acquisition tech, look at some new additional Gorilla sourcing for 3D sets and props, explore lightning fast set construction for UDK using Real Illusion's suite of software. As always, we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in and get started. So to begin with objects and props, just like with sets and locations, our first line of defense for good, fast, and cheap will always be, why model it when you can just download it? And again, for Gorilla sources for objects and props, we'll have to turn to the two great sources, TurboSquid and 3D Warehouse. The one issue you may find with these services when using them to acquire assets for previs in UDK is that sometimes the pipeline of getting these assets into UDK in a format that UDK can understand and use can sometimes take a lot of trial and error and work. One company who's made it extremely easy to build sets, animate characters, and bring all of these assets seamlessly into UDK is Real Illusion. To start the set building process with Real Illusion's suite of software, we'll start with iClone 5 Pro. You can download a free trial of Real Illusion's iClone 5 Pro from their website at www.realillusion.com. I would also highly recommend downloading their free trial of 3D Exchange and their amazing mocap device plugin, which we'll cover in the next class. Real Illusion also has their own marketplace with characters, motions, props, complete sets, and stages. Their wide variety of complete sets and props range from modern city, sci-fi interiors, medieval, urban decayed sets, and a wide variety perfect for saving time and creating quick on-the-fly previs. Creating sets in Real Illusion is as simple as drag and drop for complete sets, and using their amazing 3D Exchange 5 pipeline conversion software makes outputting complex assets like this to UDK basically a two-click process. To create a set from scratch in iClone 5, we can simply go to the Set tab and choose from either one of the preloaded or purchased prop categories. In this case, we'll choose an entire city block and then simply drag and drop into our viewport. Additional assets can be brought in in a similar fashion with simple drag and drop functionality. To get these assets into UDK, we simply drag and drop into 3D Exchange, export to FBX, and choose our target preset as Game Engine Unreal. Jumping into UDK, we simply open our content browser and simply import the FBX. We'll make sure that materials and textures are checked to import and say OK to all. Once it's fully imported, we simply drag and drop into our viewer. Real Illusion's iClone 5 and 3D Exchange completely take the work and hassle out of bringing static and skeletal meshes into UDK. We sometimes find ourselves in a position where I need a fully rigged digital double now and, well, I completely suck at character modeling. If any of you can relate to this situation, I have a solution. Thanks to the creative techs at Real Illusion, I'm going to show you the complete Tech Gorilla workflow for how you can create fully rigged digital doubles in less than an hour with nothing more than a couple of reference images. So let's say your producer walks in at 11.59 right before you're heading out to lunch and says, I need a fully rigged digital double of Dwayne The Rock Johnson before everyone gets back from lunch so that we can have this previs done by the end of the day for our meeting with the director. So we're going to knock out this digital double in a half hour and still have a half hour left over to be able to grab something to eat. We'll do a quick internet search and grab some photos to use as reference. These should do perfectly. What we need to start is one evenly lit shot of the face. This one should do just fine. Let's open up iClone 5 Pro, go to the Actor tab, and under Templates, we're going to select the G5 character Chuck. Chuck's got hair, so the first thing we want to do is delete that. Select the Hair tab, select the hair, and delete. Let's line them up so we have a little bit of a better view. Under Head, we're going to click Load Image. We'll select the most evenly lit shot of his face and drag a marquee to completely encompass the head, and then click Next. Next, we'll select the face type to male and move the vertices in the outline shown till the face on the left lines up as good as possible. What we're really looking for is a good alignment of the mouth and eyes and that horizontally it encompasses the whole head. Once you have it relatively good, simply click Next. Next, we can use the Scale, Translate, Rotate, and Orbit tools to more accurately fine tune the alignment. Once it's pretty well aligned, let's click Next. Now we can go in and adjust the feature points and contours to even more accurately align with the features of the face. We'll align the points on the top of the head. I prefer to turn mirroring off to get the most accurate alignment. The temples, jawline, and chin. Next, we'll use the orbit and scale tools to zoom in to better see the 3D reference head on the left. Using the zoom and pan tools in the right work area, we'll move the two outside points to the edge of the nostrils, the top point to the tip of the nose, and the bottom point to the base of the nose. 
the entire time carefully watching the model on the left until it looks as good as possible. Next we'll move to the points in the mouth. We'll align the corners of the mouth and then adjust the points around the perimeter to most accurately outline the features. Next we'll move into the eyes. We'll zoom in and move our way around each eye, starting with one corner, moving our way from the corner of the eye, around the perimeter to the other corner, and then back, at each point trying to keep the lines just on the edge of the eyelid. While we could also adjust the eyebrow contour lines, I suggest trying it first and double checking the model on the left, as I found sometimes it causes distortions in the brow. In this case, I'm just going to leave it right where it is. I'll zoom out, I'll select the eyedropper tool and select a representative color of the skin, and then click OK to save the changes. This will place the texture on the model. Now comes a little bit of artistic work to modify the geometry to match. We'll move the interface over slightly to allow room to put a reference image side by side. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see we have a wide variety of controls. We'll start with the brow. Once selecting the brow controls you can see that the sliders allow morph controls between different parameters of the brow. We can load a side view reference image and rotate to a side view to help more accurately adjust the parameters in three dimensions. We'll move to the nose parameters, chin, mouth parameters, cheeks and jawbone line, ears, eyes. Next we'll move to the eye tab to adjust the eye color. UDK has some trouble interpreting the opacity of the eyelashes and lenses of the eyes, so I find it best to turn the eyelashes off to get a better preview idea of what it'll look like. By selecting each eye individually we can reduce the brightness, contrast, and hue to more accurately color the eyes. If it were necessary we could also adjust mouth, teeth, throat, and tongue parameters. But in this case we won't be seeing them so we'll just move on. By clicking the texture tab you can see a UV layout with wireframe overlay as well as a 3D preview on the right side of the screen. You can use this interface to make modifications right here or export your texture out to an image editing application such as Photoshop. Next we want to adjust the body to match. We'll move the 3D preview window out to a full body view and open up a reference image. We'll select the actor tab and check the avatar sub tab. Next we'll select avatar proportion. Using this clever little interface, we can click on representative locations on the small figure's anatomy and adjust the scale width, length, depth, and rotation of each parameter. We'll start from the head and work our way down, taking care to intermittently rotate our double to the side to make sure our adjustments are in all three dimensions. While we don't have perfect control over every aspect of our character's dimensions, we surely have enough to get us to an acceptable digital previs double. Don't forget to select the small neck control and adjust those dimensions as well. We can even fit our character with pre-made template clothing or customize by selecting the upper and lower body tabs and adjusting the parameters. Our character is complete and already fully rigged. To get an idea how he'll look with subtle natural motion, select the avatar tool under the actor tab and scroll down and activate the look at camera button. By moving and orbiting around in our 3D preview, our actor will now continue to look at the camera. To save our custom actor, we'll simply re-expand the navigation pane on the left, click the custom tab, click the plus button, and name our actor. To see how our fully rigged character will look in motion, click the animation tab and go to the motion tool. From here we can choose a list of preloaded or purchased motion capture in a wide variety of situations and themes. Trying out the motions is as simple as double clicking on the motion capture icons. Saving our project is equally as simple, selecting the project tab, and in the content manager, click custom, and click the plus button to add and name a new project. Well, there you have it, a custom, fully rigged, Tech Gorilla digital double in 20 to 30 minutes. Well, that about wraps it up for this class. As always, I'll look forward to seeing you next week and in the forums. In this class, we're going to cover breaking Gorilla tech for the animation of the 3D actors, characters, and digital doubles we created in the last class. We'll cover lightning fast tools for creating complex, multi-layered animation for those of us who aren't character animators, We'll explore the latest in tech for auto-rigging pre-existing characters, gorilla sources for motion capture data, new and breaking tech for facial capture, an amazing new Gorilla Tech UDK mocap solution from YEI Technology, and building your own home tech gorilla mocap system. As always, we've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right in and get started. So continuing where we left off last week creating custom 3D characters and doubles, let's take a look at how we bring those into UDK. So the first thing we're going to want to do is under the Actor, then Custom tab, go down to the character that we've created and select the thumbnail image. Next we're going to want to open up 3D Exchange, then move the viewer interface of iClone 5 over to the side to allow us to see the view pane window of 3D Exchange. 
Grab the thumbnail of the character in iClone 5 and simply drag it into the viewer of 3D Exchange, which will load it into 3D Exchange. Next, let's maximize the 3D Exchange interface. And with the character selected, we're going to press the Export to FBX button. Under the Advanced Settings, under Target Tool Presets, we're going to select Game Engine Unreal. We'll give our character's file a name, and in this first part of the export, we want to uncheck the Include Animation checkbox, and then go ahead and click OK. Next, let's go ahead and open up UDK and open our content browser. We'll click Import, and then select the character FBX file we created. We want to make sure to import materials, and then say OK to all. Once our character loads, let's drag our character into the interface so that we can make the couple of tweaks that we have to make to the materials coming out of iClone. Let's jump in and run up to the character in the level so that we can see the things we need to tweak. After hearing about all this cool new breaking mocap tech, let's build our own home gorilla mocap studio. Depending on your needs, many of these software applications will work fantastic for you. But as far as interoperability and being able to plug and play right into UDK, Reillusion's mocap plugin for iClone would definitely be my choice. To set up a home studio using Reillusion's mocap plugin, all you need to get started is one Microsoft Connect. These can be found new for a few hundred dollars, or I've even seen them as low as $30 to $40 at a few local game resellers. Simply install the Connect, load the drivers, let's load up the model we created in the previous class into iClone, launch the mocap plugin, hit the Connect button, and now calibrate the system by standing in front of the sensor in the modified H pose. Once we get all green indicators, we can move around and see that the skeleton is following us nicely. Now under the animation tab, under motion, we'll select device mocap and click to connect. We can use on-screen controls to launch preview or record. And you can see that our character is moving right along with us. To record, we simply lean over and click the record button. We're now recording. And once we're finished recording, we move the on-screen hands into the two red circles. Let's play back our mocap in iClone. And now let's open the timeline, and now we can start layering animation on top of our mocap. We can simply first trim the mocap to the area we want to keep. We'll trim this edge off. And now we'll open the Direct Puppet tool. The Direct Puppet tool's simple interface allows us to grab sections of the character, move them around, and puppet them in real time. In this case, we'll rotate the character's head up and down a little so it looks more like he's getting into the punches. Next, let's go to the Facial Animation Puppeteering panel which also works very intuitively and similar to the other puppeteering interface. With this one, we can grab a general full face control expression. And depending on where we move our mouse on the screen, will give us different expressions. In this case, we can have him smile or grimace. And we'll just layer over the top some very subtle brow movements as he punches. And if we like, we can give him a little smile at the end. All layered over in real time. Once we're happy with our movement, we'll select the Collect Clip button. We'll highlight and select the area we want to collect, and then right click and add Add Motion Plus to 3D Exchange. This will collect our motion capture and automatically import it into 3D Exchange and you can see our standard base character is now doing the motion we had recorded. Back in iClone, we can also select the Actor tab, go to our Custom tab, 
and then hit the plus button to add a custom actor with the motions embedded. Then we can clear out 3D Exchange and then drag our character in as we did earlier. From there, we can hit the Export FBX button, export the geometry and the animation out separately, and import them into UDK for use as we did in the UNR 101 class. And there you have it, your own home Gorilla Mocap Studio. Well, that about wraps it up for this class. As always, I'll look forward to seeing you next week and in the forums.